Hey everybody, it's Lyra from Lyra Gaming coming to you with another Diablo Immortals video. And today I'm going to give you my top 10 tips that I wish I had known about when I was starting Diablo Immortals. Some of these are so simple, others just shocked me how effective they are. So stick around if you want to get the most out of your gameplay. So the first tip is real, really big if you're going to be playing both on PC as well as potentially on mobile. And that's knowing when to use which when it comes to optimal targeting. What do I mean by that? Well, on PC, if you're playing, you are stuck, whether you like it or not, with manual targeting uh, at all the times, pretty much. So for example, if I hold this ability, I can target it. I actually really like this, especially for PvP. Um, but it can also be a little harder to target sometimes when you're just trying to farm things really easily. Now, in Mon Mobile, they have during PvE content something called snap targeting. It can basically be anywhere in a general area of, uh, of your mouse near enemies, and if you hit ability, just tap it, it will kind of auto snap to the targets. This is really, really good for speed farming, rifts, or any type of content. However, if you go into PvP, snap targeting is disabled and you have to manually target. And this can be a bit of a crutch for some people who are used to snap targeting. So number one, either get used to manual targeting or if you can, if you are going to be playing PvP, then make sure then that you play on PC because you're going to have a much easier time getting skill shots. For example, I recently hit number one on my Necromancer on my server on PvP, and I know that would not be possible whatsoever if I were to be playing on my mobile. So I basically exclusively do PvP on my PC because of that. Now, my second tip has to do with loadouts, and this is so amazing. So if you go into West March and go right over here where you see me marking, uh, this is the armory, and this does get introduced to you throughout the game, uh, but it's something to overlook very, very easily. And when you go into the armory, you have different loadouts that you can set up. You can rename them, for example. And for me, I have one for PvP, I have one for PvE. And what you can basically do is you equip yourself however you want, and then you can, uh, you're basically going to write them the first time. And then you can, there we go. Um, you can go ahead and make multiple loadouts. What's very important, as you see here, here's a warning. Your current items, Feet and Waste has a higher rank. Do you want to transfer the rank to the new item? Uh, yes. So what's really cool about this is let's say that you have items with different gems. So for example, on my PvP versus my PvE loadout, I use the same exact chess piece but I'll use a different enchant and a different gem. When you save them to the loadout and then you go back here and you activate, what's nice is it's going to auto make all the changes for you for free. So even if you're using the same kind of gems to allocate and enchants across your sets, you don't have to manually do this every changes every time you swap from let's say PVE to PVP content, or maybe you just have multiple builds that have different setups. So this is super fast, super easy, and literally at the click of a button, you can activate and swap between one or the other. If you're missing items, it will let you know, figure out your loadouts, keep them updated, and it'll, it's gonna allow you to swap, swap around nice and easy. So my next tip has to do with doing the featured activities. So again, I'm on PC here, but if you click, click at your tracker, you're gonna notice there's always a featured activity. And so right now, mine is for Elder Rifts. Now, what the featured activities do is when you complete them, you're going to get points towards your battle pass. And regardless of whether you're playing free to play or if you get the paid battle pass, this is really, really helpful because it's going to give you points towards the battle pass when you create these eld um, featured activities, which is going to unlock uh, loot for you as rewards. Also, if you're leveling for the first time from 1 to 60, this is going to kind of make you try other side content, whether it's rifts, 
whether it's maybe like a battlegrounds or a bounty, etc. And this is helpful because if all you do is the main quest, you're going to definitely hit bottlenecks where you're going to run out of EXP just from doing the main quest lines. And uh, I found this uh, around level 35 was the first time I hit that wall. And I was like level 32 and the game told me, hey, hit level 35 before the, before the quest can continue. But once I started doing these featured activities on a regular basis, they were a nice little distraction, swapped up my, swapped up my gameplay. And in the long run, it got me a lot more uh, rewards from my game pass. All right, the next tip is something that everybody needs to take advantage of, and that is auto pickup. So if you go under your settings and under general and scroll down, there is auto pickup. And by default, these are all disabled, which is mind numbing for me. I wish they had auto enabled it for everybody. I don't know about you guys, especially on mobile, I don't want to be clicking everything on the ground. So when I first started, I went and enabled all three of them. Now that I do a lot of running of dungeons and farming, I actually disabled normal because I don't want to have to go and throughout my gear to you know uh salvage junk every 15 minutes but this is a great feature starting out enable them all and then as you kind of get more powerful you may end up getting rid of normal you may not you may just hoard everything for all the materials but this is something you're definitely going to want to enable as soon as possible and then uh run with it whether it's on mobile or on pc all right another overlooked feature that people uh, may miss if they're kind of rushing through the game is what's called the build recommendations. And this is especially great for beginners. So if you go under your inventory and look here at the bottom, there's two buttons on the bottom left hand corner. Bottom left hand corner is your stat sheet. Bottom right hand corner are your recommended builds. And so what's really nice here is two things. Number one, it's gonna give you three different build recommendations. And uh, for the Necromancer, it's two different PVE ones. One like a summoner, one for like a, basically a corpse explosion build and one PVP build. And these are really, really kind of helpful. What I like about it is it's going to give you example abilities you want to use for it, legendary items that are recommended, even legendary gems, and then later on secondary gear sets when you do unlock that feature. And what's really cool is as you find either unlock these abilities from leveling or if you find these items, you're going to get these kind of rewards for the build progress. And so you see, I'm 8 out of 10. If I get two more, I'm going to get 10,000 gold here. But they vary. So it's a nice, another little uh, collection element uh, for your gameplay. So I thought this was nice. And if you're brand new, these are helpful because these builds, the ones I've seen, are actually all quite effective and useful. There's way more other ways you can play, but you can't go wrong starting with these recommended builds. All right. The next tip has to do with knowing how to group find a work. And this is something that saved me so much time now that I want to uh, know how to use it. So it's instinctive to, let's say if you want to group up with somebody, maybe you go into one of the chats and say, hey, looking for people for this activity. But you can do something much, much easier. If you go under the menus and go under party finder, and let's say you want to run a certain dungeon, you can go and create posts. Here are some of the current uh, ones that are up. But you can create post, and then what's really cool is you can change your difficulty. So I'm on Hell 1 currently, and uh, you can change the activities. So for example, right now they're all, you can scroll through it. So maybe you want to go farming for hidden layers, or you want to go do Elden Rifts or get a group for Challenge Rifts. Or what's very common is let's say you want to farm a certain dungeon because dungeons drop set pieces um, at level 60 plus and the higher difficulties as long as you run with at least two players and so you can select that let's say you want to do mad king's reach you can put a uh, message here and then you can go create and then you can even auto accept application as long as people meet the criteria so that's really really important um, and if you're not even if you're for example not yet level 60 so let's say for example you are still leveling you can actually change the uh, the level requirements. So let's say uh, you only want people between level 50 and 60 because you're like level 55 or something. So you can do that right there and you can make the adjustments, which is really, really kind of cool. So fully customizable, whether you want to find a group for farming in a zone, whether you want to find a group for raids, for PvP, whatever you want, this is a really cool feature. Once you activate it, you're, you kind of show up uh, on the menu, there's a little notification in World Chat uh, for recruitment, and people will just naturally join the group. It's going to save you so much time. Great feature. Learn it, love it, use it. It's great.
Okay, okay so the next tip is especially important for free-to-play players, and that's when it comes to Elden Rifts and optimizing the use of your crests or even the need to do crests. So this game pushes adding multiple crests to a run, but I want to point out something very, very important, especially if you do not have a lot of crests. If you look at baseline before doing any kind of addition, you can actually do runs without any crests. And why is this important? This is important because of the rewards you get. So you can have a chance at rares and legendaries, EXP, but also something called fading embers. And this is important because the fading embers uh, uh, and rune traders are used to purchase runes for crafting legendary gems. This lets you make very specific tier one and two legendary gems, even potentially having a chance at a four or five star gem. But what some people don't realize is just for running a Elder Rift, you get eight of these. Adding extra crest only adds one, regardless of whether it's rare or legendary. So there's a basically a diminishing re returns per run, and you're going to get the majority out of it even if you just run baseline. So these are worth running no matter what, even if you don't have runes. So if you are trying to farm farming em uh, fading embers, remember you do not technically need crests for it. You are getting the majority of your fading embers just from running at baseline. Now, of course, if you want the better chance of legendaries or guaranteed legendary gems, then you can use the crest. But again, especially if you don't have many of this of these uh, crests, you're a free-to-play player. Remember, you can still get these even with zero crests. All right, my next tip also has to do with grouping and particularly for dungeons. As I hinted in an earlier tip, when you go and play on Hell 1 or higher, so once you hit level 60, you're going to unlock the ability to run Par uh, Hell 1, which is for Paragon 1 to 60, and later it gets higher and higher. But the point is, as soon as you hit Paragon 1, you'll see here under the description, dungeons drop set items and require a party of at least two. Now, you're going to want to, whenever possible, run with four players. And now, why is that? That's because when you run with four players, you're going to get a buff that increases the chance of gems dropping. Now, these are not the legendary gems. These are these socketed gems. And these are also important because you're going to craft them and put them in your secondary pieces. Those are all your jewelry pieces. And this is going to give you stats, potency, damage, armor, health. This is the stuff that makes a huge difference, whether it's your PvE or PvP um, damage profile. And because this is for everybody, for free to play, you might as well be doing it. If you're not running four player teams, you are missing out on this buff and over a long period of time, you're gonna miss out on a ton of free gems. I wish I was doing this from day one, I didn't. Well, hopefully I can help you make, make up for this and not make the same mistake. All right, my next tip has to do with introducing you to the Adventure Seeker. I quite literally did not even know about this NPC until I was already level 60 and I think like Paragon 3 or 4 and I randomly ran into her. Um, so this NPC right here, if you look at the West March, is right here to directly to the west of the Essence Transfer. And so if you talk to this NPC, you can get side quests and elite side quests. And these can be very, very lucrative. Now, side quests you can just pick up. They're going to give you money, XP, uh, random quest rewards. So you can always pick these up. Um, they're going to be just randomly popping up, uh, similar to the side quests we're going to be discussing here in a moment in the world. But you can also pick up elite side quests. Now, these require adventure journals. So you are going to find these throughout the world in various ways, and it's going to give you an ability to run these specific quests and they are limited it looks like um, I completed one already and it even gives you a date completion these have kind of an epic story give you cool rewards so again I didn't know about this but definitely come over here do the side quests whenever you do, do find these adventure journals make sure to come use them and do these really really cool quests all right the next tips are going to have to do with how the world changes once you swap over to Hell difficulty. So again, once you hit level 60, unlock Paragons, 
you're going to be able to swap difficulties when you're in the main city. And as soon as you hit to uh, swap over to Hell 1, it's going to change the world. So if now I look at my map of the world, check it out. Everything is level 60. And so you can go back to all the areas in the world that you leveled through. And now everything has changed. Everything, first of all, is level 60. There's going to be a higher density of rare mobs, but there's going to be a couple new features. So the first feature I want to show you are basically the side quests. And so as you see here in the footage, this is going to look like this, like this blue explanation mark. And they're going to be randomly throughout. And it looks like based off the achievement page, there seems to be about 15 of these that randomly spawn uh, that you can have access to throughout each region. So not only is it going to give you achievements and points towards your battle pass, for example, but this is also going to give you some really, really nice rewards. They have little stories attached to them. They're varied. They're not just all kill quests. Some are fetch quests. Some have you go and do different story-based elements. Very, very fun. Whenever you run into one running around the world, I would say pause and do it. Complete it because they're not there forever. They kind of come and go. And you might as well do them as you go along. Again, so that's the first feature that gets unlocked. Now, the second huge feature that a lot of people don't know about are the world raid encounters and there's a variety of them and there's generally one main one per region so for example the one i'm showing you here is the stagecoach and this comes around every couple hours during the day you're going to see a notification where it says as you can see here there's a countdown timer for it now here's the cool thing when it gets time for this to pop it will actually throw up a notification for you and saying, hey, this event is starting. Would you like to join it? If you click yes, the game will auto navigate where you need to go. And as you see in this event, what it's going to do is it's going to spawn a stagecoach and you're going to be kind of chasing it. And whatever you need to do for this event is going to tell you in the upper left hand corner. So in the first phase uh, for this one in particular, it's a little weird. Just chase the coach around going to kill the spawning guards eventually what's going to happen is the tax collector is going to dismount you got to kill him and when you kill him you get potential loots and there's a chance that you drop unique loots that are related to the boss and so there's varying ones for this there's another one um, that you basically kill this kind of blood rose and it's kind of a, a mechanic where if you get too close, the Blood Rose tries to suck people in. If people don't know, it'll eat them and it'll heal half its health. And these things are meant to be cleared by a ton of people. So you're going to see tons of people swarming because they may have, you know, it scales by amount of players, I believe, in a region. So I've seen them be like 3 million, 7 million, 10 million uh, health. They're not super difficult. Just pay attention to the mechanics. And it's a great way to get loot, EXP, and so forth. Uh, lots of them to basically for you to explore and find throughout the world all right now the final tip this is my tip number 11 it's a bonus tip and it's particular to pc players you may notice my mouse doesn't look normal my biggest complaint in this game when it comes to controlling especially on pc is how tiny the cursor is especially in pvp so what i highly recommend you do is get yourself a mouse modification software or add-on or whatever the one that I found on Steam for $3.99 is called YOLO, Y-O-L-O, -O, Mouse. It's super easy. You install it, you run it, and then you can uh, basically, uh, it, I believe it's Control-Alt-1. You can change the, the type of icons, the size of them, the color, the effect, and this is really, really cool. So if you're somebody that struggles to kind of see your cursor when there's a bunch of particle effects around, this has helped me a ton. In PvP, it's helped me get kill shots. Uh, make sure I don't misclick random UI elements. Really, really helpful. So again, bonus tip for PC players for quality of life. Get yourself some form of cursor modification because unfortunately, it is not included in-game. All right, guys. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. Hit that not notification bell to be notified when I drop other RPG and looter shooter videos. And if you have any other questions or comments, make sure to drop them in the comments below. As always, guys, thank you for all the support, and I'll see you guys in the next video.